VIP access. VIP access with Aniko on Africa Loud. My name is Aniko Owoko. I'm an event and music curator. I'm also a publicist and somebody who's very passionate at arts and culture and growing our industry. This is the second edition of Gote Institute's Industry Talks curated by yours truly. It's been an amazing day. The conversation was about streaming revenues and music distribution. And of course, I brought a panel of experts when it comes to music distribution. This is a topic I'm very passionate about and I'm very happy we had a full house. We had dope conversations conversations about how to put your music out there, how to be discoverable, but most importantly, how to leverage on your online data, how to leverage on your back-end data. If I'm not the biggest streamed artist, how can I use my data to make the best out of the situation? Now I want to talk to the panelists and see what they thought about our topic of discussion. As Aniko mentioned, my name is Beth Achita. I have been in the music industry for some time. Then I ended up uh, organizing one of the leading music conferences here, which uh, was called Ongea. And the aim for this was really to export uh, Kenyan music to the global world. My name is uh, Martha Huro from Boomplay, as uh, extensively explained by Aniko. And my market is East Africa. I cater for Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Rwanda, um, Somali, uh, Somalia, sorry, um, Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia. And although Zambia is not geographically in East Africa, it's also my market. And um, so Boomplay is an online music distribution platform, streaming, so to speak. And we have a, we've had a presence in the African market since 2015, but in Kenya, it started in 2017. And I was part of the pioneer team, and I'm still there up to now. Some of the things or some of the key learnings that I've had along the way have been the challenges that we face in the music industry are actually boil down to three. Um, number one being policy. Uh, we've had a lot of issues with policy, um, starting from the Copyright Act that we have. I'm sure Agnes will cover that uh, extensively. It's, it's a problem because as much as you've registered your IP, you can't walk into a bank and get a loan against your IP. But you can do the same with your title deed or your logbook. Essentially, they are both pieces of papers that are legal papers, but that can be done. Um, also, if somebody um, samples your music and they don't say please or thank you, by please is, please can I use your music? And you say, okay, fine, you're my G, use. Thank you is you pay the person. The most that you can do that is covered by law is just tell them, stop doing it. So you send them a cease and desist. If you take them to court, we have less than 10 IP lawyers in Kenya. That number is even lower for IP judges because IP falls under civil suit or civil court. So it's just treated like uh, something petty whereas it's a criminal activity. Because um, there's a report that was done by PAP. Oh yeah, I'm also the vice chair for PAP, Partners Against Piracy. We did a report in 2022, and the Kenya creative industry is losing 252 million per day. Per day, to piracy. So we are in music, you're in film, you're in fashion, you're in gaming, we're all losing money as stakeholders and also as content creators or artists. So the most that you can tell this person who's pirating your music is get my music on Boomplay, get my music on Mdundo, get my music on YouTube, get my music on all other DSPs, controlled or you tell them where to get your music. We'll of course, get into that. Number two would be education. As I said, we have less um, IP lawyers and judges. As an artist also, do you know how to run your talent as a business? And do you know how to package your content? Do you know how to 
who to actually go to for what? For social media, for PR, um, IP, lawyers as well. Do you know how to, or do you even know your rights? What is IP? Or how can I uh, register my IP? How do I make it legal? Um, so we don't have such. And of course, starting from curriculum and out of curriculum. Number three will be finance. Brands and individuals are not willing to invest in the music industry. It's quite unfortunate. But we've had some um, distributors, some DSPs also investing in the craft of artists. And we've, we've seen quite a number of releases, especially during the corona period. Um, we got a lot of people dropping albums. So it was quite encouraging. And now we have more and more people dropping songs because as the data, as far as data is concerned for Boomplay, um, Kenya has the least number of releases in comparison to our counterparts in Tanzania, Ghana, and Nigeria. Of course, we'll dive into that. And my, my reason to accept this um, panel today is essentially to have those conversations that really need to be had, but either are not had or they are had with certain people and not all people. So how do I, as an artist, make more money from streaming platforms? Because there's a lot of money to be made. How do I interpret my data? Because there's a lot of data, but then the problem is it's not properly interpreted because, I mean, maybe people don't know how to interpret it or essentially they don't have access to that data. And then how can we as platforms and artists come together to ensure that this pie that Beth spoke about is properly eaten? My name is Agnes. Um, as Aniko said, kwa lugha ya kawaida, it's ENDAR. So I handle artists on Mdundo. I take care of their requests um, all the way from onboarding up to the point they are paid, the royalties, and that cycle keeps going. So I'm basically the person who comes between the artist and the platform to make sure that they get the best out of the platform and whatever issues they have or whatever opportunities are there for them to use are available to them. Streaming is very single focused, right? Singles is what works for the streaming platform. That's why even when you have 13 songs, we only pitch one out of those 13 songs. That's why we usually advise at least do 50% of the tracks before you drop the full project. More and more people are appreciating bodies of work. It's about the packaging of your body of work. Sometimes I feel like crying when I see you have a nice body of work, but the arrangement is terrible. Because then, you, as a listener, you have to capture my attention. Here is Agnes Opondo, who's Head of Partnerships and Licensing Kenya at Mdundo. Hi, Agnes. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you so much for being one of our panelists on this conversation today. How are you feeling? I'm so excited. It was a very nice session. I've learned a lot. I've shared a lot. And it's a really brilliant community that has come through. So, yeah, it was really good. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. I think we had a really great conversation when it comes to music streaming, what, um, what are the current trends, what does success look like. I think for you, what was your biggest takeaway or the biggest advice you can give to an artist who's watching and wondering, how do I get discoverable on a DSP, on Mdundo? What's your big, what was your biggest takeaway and what's the advice you'd give to somebody watching? I've just realized how similar we are as DSPs because I thought each DSP has its own way of working. But from Martha's insights and also even what Beth has said, I've just learned that the best way to go about it is to pitch early. Because for me, I always tell artists, pitch early so that I'm able to mobilize the resources that we have on time. Because you see, it's different teams. Like us, we have one marketing team. So imagine if you pitch to me a week to release, and I have to tell this person who is doing, let's say even the creatives, for the entire Africa a week to. 
But if you had told me earlier, at least, you know, I'm able to make sure I get, I get for you what you need on time. Now here's Beth Achitsa, who's heading artist relations at The Orchard, East Africa. What's up, Beth? Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine, thank you so much for coming to this conversation today, Beth. Thank you so much for always just like putting the artist on. I think, you know, with your VIP access and everything in between, you're doing an amazing job to share success stories. Because sometimes when you see things closer home, yeah. it just sort of like gives you that ambition to also say, oh, if Nani did this, yeah. I can also do better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thank you so much. I appreciate. I think um, today was a wonderful day. You know, we're discussing streaming revenues and music distribution. These are conversations we have every day. What should your distributor do for you? No, I think if they can get your music out there to the fans, right, and amplify it, that is a good sort of like way to start. They should also just be able to advise you and help you the wider market uh, ecosystem so that in that sense uh, you are able to stay ahead of the curve. This is Martha Huro from Boomplay Music. She's the general manager of Boomplay East Africa. How are you Martha? I'm good Aniko. Thank you very much for inviting me to this event again. I want to say thank you so much because you brought them insights and after every insight there was a bomb you were dropping. I love you. <laughs> nuclear war <laughs> artists always ask me um, where must I be I'm like you better be on Boomplay you can be on all the platforms but you should not miss on Boomplay because I know there are a lot of people who access uh, music through Boomplay especially because it's very friendly to Android for those who are listening and watching what is your biggest takeaway and what can be your biggest advice to all the artists who are trying to break uh, in this big bad, bad world of the DSPs there's a lot of questions around how DSPs work okay. and not enough information on how they work. The ins and outs especially, uh, essentially of how a DSP works. From when I put my music on the platform, how can I you know, be discoverable? How can I push my music on the platform? How can I earn from, you know, royalties from my music? How can I get trainings as well? So there was a lot of questions asked around our trade and what we do. So there's an assumption of people understand what a DSP is. But this was an eye opener on the need of giving people information on how to on the DSP's platform and especially on how to on Boomplay. Also there was a lot of feedback from the artists themselves telling us the feedback on what we can improve on the app and also what partnership we can foster and it was quite eye opening. Any advice that you can give to the artists who are trying to make it big uh, on different DSPs or even Boomplay? Yes, you need to focus on your marketing strategy. You know when we say strategy, you think it's a big word. It's actually how, how are you putting your music out there? From, from production, is it correct for the market? Are you, uh, is it properly mixed and mastered? You know, the whole shabang of production. Then once it's done with production, then how do you market it? How do you, even word of mouth, even telling people get my music on Boomplay, you know, it's important. Uh, distributing your music from the different channels, DSPs, radio, digital as well, using all the platforms that are available to you as an artist to maximize on the numbers that you have. Because this discovery section, every DSP, including digital, will tell you it's about numbers. Thank you so much. It's a wrap. Uh, right here at VIP Access on location with Martha Huro. We are capping off right here at Gote Institute where we were discussing streaming revenues and music distribution. Thank you so much. See you next time. VIP Access, VIP Access. with Aniko on Africa Loud.